Hey everybody, welcome to episode three. Thank you all for joining. Um, I appreciate everybody who subscribed so far. Um, and I appreciate everybody who watched episode one and two as well. Continue to share, continue to um, tell your friends about it. Tell them to come subscribe so we can all learn together like I always say. Um, in this episode three, I wanted to go over a couple of Q&A things and then dive into a stock that I think um, has good potential this year. Um, by the end of the year, I feel it should definitely be at least double um, its price right now. Um, so I definitely get into that uh, closer to the end of the video. Um, but just to start out on the Q&A, um, I did get a question on the past uh, past episode, episode two. Um, and the question was, how do you decide on which companies to invest in? Um, how can you know which of small companies are going to make it big versus the small companies that's going to fall? Um, and to answer that, um, just to answer your first question, how do I decide which companies to invest in? Um, I look at a company's overall uh, stock price and you know what they've done so far over the past you know two to three years like I mentioned in my last episode I try to go back at least two years um, see what they've done um, and then I try to look forward two years and what I mean by looking forward two years is looking at what stocks they have coming up what uh, meetings they have coming up as far as presentation and things like that because as you know being in the market Whenever they have meetings, whenever they have uh, presentation and things like that for stockholders to see and, and, and chime in on, the stock price usually go up or down that day or right after that meeting um, based on what they talked about. Um, and then, like I said, I also look at the future products, products that they have coming out, uh, things that they're investing into, uh, companies that they're acquiring, things like that as far as the market share, how much of the market share that they have, um, how much they can potentially get. Um, uh, you know, versus their competitors. Um, so it's a lot of things that I look at when I'm looking to invest in a company. Um, but those are the main things that I focus on before I actually invest in a stock. Um, I always try to look and see if this stock has upside when I'm doing just the stock side. Um, like I mentioned in my last video, if you're doing options, you can definitely look at a company and say, okay, this company is going to, you know, go down. So then you can look into buying a put option um, or put a contract, I should say, into that company because you know it's going to drop. Um, that way you can make money off the company going down versus buying the stock outright um, and only making money if the company goes, if the stock price goes up. Um, so that's just to answer your first question. Um, the second one, how can you know which uh, small companies are going to make it big versus the small companies that might fall? Um, kind of relates to, you know, how I answered your first question. I look at the company, um, I look at a smaller company, and when I mean smaller, I mean anywhere between $20 and $30 or lower. Um, I feel that's a smaller company or a smaller stock you know, that you can invest into. Most average people can afford a $20, $30 stock versus like an Amazon. I view those as bigger companies because you know they're thousands of dollars for each uh, stock, um, which most people just can't get into unless you're buying a, a contract or option in those stocks. Um, so pretty much what I mean by a small company getting big and getting to an early, um, I'm looking at the company, like I said, looking at their future, looking at what they have and what they're getting into, um, and then looking at the overall industry that they're in and what their competitors are doing versus what they're doing. Um, and usually, you know, if a smaller company is doing just as well as uh, a bigger company, then you can start looking to that and say, okay, wow, you know, I see that. You know, if you, you want to look at like Ford, I see that Ford is, you know, rated ten, eleven dollar stock. But you look at GM or any of these, you know, some of the bigger name automakers, their stocks is thirty, forty, fifty dollars and higher. Um, so you can look at that and say, OK, I might want to dive into that stock, you know, because it's, it's you know, they're doing the same thing that these thirty and forty dollar price stocks are doing. They just haven't reached that exposure yet or got there yet. Um, so it's better to hop in and then um, get it at, at the bottom versus at the top. Um, I would say Ford right now, just speaking on Ford stock, personally, my personal opinion, um, it has risen um, a, a lot. Uh, I think, you know, th there will be a dip soon, um, but I think by the end of this year, that price, that, that stock as well is going to be close to double its price right now, just because uh, with EV and everything else that they're doing, um, I think Ford is, is, is on the right track to, 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 you know, make a big boom this year um, and do good things. Um, now I wanted to go over, if you all follow my Facebook or Instagram page, um, I wanted to go over something that I shared you all on Friday, right? Um, this past week was a four day trading week. 
um, which I wanted to give you all an inside look on some of the things that I'm trading, not as far as the stocks, but as far as, you know, some of the money that can be made within a week, right? Um, I had a goal to make at least 10,000 this week so I can show you, okay, it's possible. It's possible to make 10,000 one week. Uh, we do that times four, that's 40,000. Um, and so that's a, that's a good, you know, good week, right? Obviously you're not going to make 10,000 every week. Um, but try to set a goal for yourself, whether it's a hundred dollars this week, $50 this week, $10 this week, um, set your goal, set your limit, set a realistic goal and try to achieve it. Um, and that's why I wanted to show you all, you know, just pretty much go over a, a goal that you set and then seeing how you go throughout the week, trying to achieve that goal. Um, and then on Friday, um, I let you all see as far as, Hey, early, you know, the stock stock market first opened nine 30. Um, I was down, I believe a uh, thousand or, or 1200, right? I was down that much. Um, and most people, you know, what I would say is they panic, they get nervous. They say, okay, I've lost 1200. I need to get out of this stock or whatever stock you're in. I need to get out of it because I've lost 50, $20 or whatever the, the amount may be. You start to panic. And that's what I was referring to. I think in my first video, I called it panic money. Um, and that's exactly what it is. You're panicking, you're nervous. You're like, why is the stock dropping? I've lost too much. I've either lost all my profits or I've lost my profits plus my personal money that I invested, right? Um, so you want to get out of it as quickly as you can. But what I would say to people is at that moment, like I said before, buy more. You always buy more at that. You average down. Um, usually I don't like to sell unless I'm, you know, making at least, you know, a, a penny or more. I don't like to sell the stock. Um, I don't want to sell if I'm losing money or anything because I, was, I understand the stock market, the way it works is what goes down must go up and what goes up must come down eventually. Um, so it's all about timing when the stock market, when you're doing trading stocks and things like that, it's definitely all about timing and doing the right thing. Um, and, and paying attention to what, what stock you're in and, and what they usually do around the time um, that you're in that stock. And you can kind of look at the upside and kind of get an idea of, okay, if I be patient, I know I lost a thousand today, but in two weeks from now, I probably make three, four thousand. So I didn't really lose a thousand. You know, I sat on it. I stayed strong. I believed in my stock. You, you invested in that stock for a reason. Um, so if you invested in that stock, believe in it, right? So if it drops, that's okay. You know, you, you understand you, when you're getting in the stock market, you have to understand the stock is going to drop. You're going to eventually see yourself losing money. And that's when you can't panic. And a lot of people in the market panic at that time. Um, and I feel that definitely separates, um, some of the good stock traders, um, out here versus some of the bad. Um, because, and I, and I get it, you know, some people when they say, okay, well, I see myself losing a thousand there. I just can't really sit into that because I, I need that money. Well, what I advise to those people is definitely, that's what I always say, do not put any money in the stock market that you're not willing to lose. That way, when you see yourself down a thousand, 200, 300, 400, whatever the case may be, you're not really psychologically as pressed to sell it and try to save some of that money because you already went in the mindset of, I'm willing to lose everything that I put in, whether it's a dollar or 5,000 or 500,000, you have to understand that you're willing to lose all of that because it could happen. But by telling yourself that you already put yourself in the mindset that you're willing to stick through the, the down, you know, the stock market is a roller coaster. So when those, when those down, you know, those downturns come, you have to understand that's time to put in more, stay solid, either buy more average down or sit solid, let it, you know, stay on it for either a month, week, two, and let it go back up. Um, and that's what I was able to show Friday um, on my post. I was down a thousand at 930. I believe by two o'clock that day, I was up 1500, ended up making 1500 that day. Um, so that was just to, to go and show, you know, I didn't panic. I didn't sell any stock. I, you know, I didn't do anything. I actually bought a little bit more just to average down, you know, while, the, while I felt my stock was low, a stock that I felt was good and should double, it ended up dropping but I understand long term, I think this stock is going to make it. I never thought the stock was going to jump $10, $5 this week. So why would I be upset when it drops, you know, a couple of cents or a couple of uh, dollars? That's when I go and buy more because I'm looking at it as, wow, I can now get this stock at a discounted price. Because I understand a week from now or an hour from now, wherever the case may be, this stock is going to be double or 5 or $6 more than where it's at now. Um, so that's one of the main things that I tell people and I want to show people this week that you have to be patient and you have to stay within your stock. Um, and actually a high school teammate of mine sent, uh, sent me a, a message on Instagram 
And it pretty much reads exactly what I just said. And it, it goes, uh, making money with stocks looks incredibly easily, easy. In reality, the stock market is one of the toughest mental games ever. And that's exactly what it is. It's a mental game. Um, you have to understand, you have to stick in it, and you have to be mentally tough when the stock market goes down. And just like the quote, you know, the quote says, you have to understand it's all mental. That is it. So when your stock goes down, it is strictly mental and that you should tell yourself at that point, I'm going to buy more, like I said earlier, or I'm going to stay solid because I would not have invested in this stock if I didn't think it was going to go up. And if you did a good research on that stock, you should have confidence and you should have the mindset to know that this stock is going to reach because you've already done your research. You already know what's going to happen. Yes, there's going to be hiccups. You, you was prepared for that. Um, that's why you have a little bit of money left over in, in, your, in your buying bank. So when that stock does drop down some, you can buy more and more and more um, and average down. So and that's one of the things I want to get across in episode three. Um, just m mental mental toughness while you're, while you're doing stocks um, is major. Um, it's key because, you know, timing is everything. And if you can't sit on it and be patient um, and have that mental toughness to know that, you know, when I, while I'm down, you know, I can go and buy more of this stock. And I know that at the end of this, I'm either going to double my profit or make more money just because I bought more when the stock went down and I didn't panic and sell. Um, and that's why I always say panic money, because that's exactly what it is. Um, so definitely stick to your stocks, stick strong in it. Um, don't let the, the downturns get you. Um, stay strong, buy more and, and go there. Now, don't get me wrong. If you need that money or you feel, hey, I did the wrong research on this stock and I didn't do, you know, good research on this stock, then by all means, pull your money because nine out of 10, you're going to lose it all. You know, you're, you're definitely going to lose it all if you didn't do good research and the stock is dropping because maybe you got in at a high at a high point and now this stock is just going, you know, it's going to go down. Um, so definitely, like I talked about before, don't get into a stock while it's it's hype around it, you know, because at that point, that's when you should be selling some of your shares or all of them. Um, if you already invested, sell off the hype um, and then buy when people uh, are fearing the stock. That's definitely what you should do. When people think the stock is not good, they think this this, this industry is going down. That's when you want to buy because it's going to be that's the cheapest. That's the only time you'll be able to get that stock is when people don't believe in it. You have to believe in your stock. It's mental. It's just a straight mental game. You have to believe in it. Um, so that's one of the main things, like I said, I wanted to get across in episode three is mental toughness. Um, and I wanted to dive into a stock that, I, you know, I said I was going to, I promised a stock at the end of this video. Um, and we're getting close to, to my time here. Um, so I wanted to go over a stock that I felt is going to, you know, definitely rise. Um, and like I said, at least double by the end of the year, if not more. Um, and that stock is Kern. Um, and that's K-E-R-N. Um, so that's one of the stocks. And just to give you a background on that stock, I want you all to do your own research. I want you all to dig into it. Go look it up. Do your own research on it. You know, make your decision whether you want to invest in it, whether you believe in it or not. And if you do, um, I would say definitely dive into it. Um, but that stock, just to give you all background on it, is a pretty much a, a technology stock that tracks uh, cannabis. They, they help the government and local uh, farmers track um, the, the cannabis seed from beginning to end. Um, and just to go to, to dive in on a little bit more, um, let me go on their page right quick. It pretty much helps explain um, exactly what it is. So if you all have the Robinhood app, I use Robinhood, I use Fidelity. Um, but if you have the Robinhood app, you can actually click on the stock. Um, when you scroll down to about, it definitely tells you what the company is about. Um, gives you a quick overview of what the company is about, um, just so you can already know what you're diving into or what industry you're getting into. Um, so when it comes to Kern, um, definitely it's about cannabis. It's a it's all about tracking the the sale uh, and, and the seed from beginning to end before you know you plant it until you plant it until you sell it. Um, but it's a software company. That's exactly what it is. It's a, it's a software company. They they have technology and they sell technology. Um, even though it's centered around weed, you have to understand when you're investing in stocks, you have to look at the potential of that stock. So this company has a technology that they can use in other industries. You get what I'm saying? So let's say if you want to track a vaccine, you want to know where vaccines are going from beginning to end, you can use a company like this to track your vaccine and know where your vaccines are going and how they're getting there, especially when you have, you know, uh, a temperature vaccine that 
has to make it somewhere to a certain place before the temperature, you know, reaches a certain thing or the vaccine, no, the dose of the vaccine is no longer good. You definitely want to have a tracker on that to make sure it's, it's getting there and it's meeting the uh, the end point in, in, in a good time before the, the product is a waste at that point. Um, so to dive in on it, um, it's called a kern, a um, but short on to look it up is K E R N on Robinhood or whatever uh, trading app you're using. That's their uh, hand. That's their handle. That's their symbol. Um, it's a cannabis compliance and inventory tracking technology company. Um, it engages in the provisions of enterprise resource planning technology. Uh, its products enables cannabis businesses and government agencies to manage the cannabis supply chain from seed to sale and collect and synthesize valuable data. Um, so when you think of that, right, you know, now when you look what just happened here in elections, right? So, you know, I had the other question, how do you look at a company and say, whether you want to invest in it a lot or invest in it or not? Um, so when you look at this company, right, you, you see what they did. I just explained to you what they do. And you look at the environment that we're in now, right? We have a Democrat, Democrat Senate, um, Democrat majority Senate, uh, Democrat majority, uh, house. Um, and a, and, a, and a Democrat, you know, here in, in the president, vice president. Right. Um, and all are, you know, for marijuana, legal, legalization of marijuana um, and it, uh, to de decriminalize it. Right. Um, so when you look at the, 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 the future, you can try to, you know, when I say try to look at the future. When you think about it, the next four years. Um, I feel there's going to be an ease on cannabis and the, and the legalization of surrounding cannabis. Right. Um, you already see it. You already have seen it the past couple of years where certain states, California, things like that have decriminalized weed there. Um, but now, you know, you're talking about federally uh, decriminalize it. That's a big thing. That's a big step. Right. And as I said in here, they help local businesses and they also help government agencies track the sale of this seed from beginning to end. Right. Um, so when you're when you're looking around it. Um, you have to understand when cannabis becomes fully legal, it's definitely going to be regulated, right? Um, you're going to have a tax, you're going to have everything. I mean, this is already, you have examples all throughout America where this is happening. Um, and when you have a company such as this that helps governments track the sale of the, of the sale from beginning to end, this is something that governments, Democrat governments, definitely Democrat led uh, governments are going to look into investing in because they already want to legalize and decriminalize these things. Right. So in order to, you know, to do that, they got to have regulations. They have to know where the, the like I said, let's say this uh, company is from the sale of this seed to the beginning, to the beginning, to the end. You have to know where everything is going. Right. Why not look in the head and say, OK, well, this company right here, they already do that and they already work with governments. You can kind of already put the two and two together and say, all right, well, well, whenever this does become legal, won't this be one of the companies that they use in order to track this, right? They're going to use their technology. And like I said before, yes, they have a technology that's, you know, centered around cannabis, but a technology can be used in many other industries. So not only can they make money and there's a revenue source there, this company can also make money elsewhere that you don't even like see at the moment. Um, so when I'm looking at this company, I would say, wow, you know, they have a lot of upside, but now you have to think about the downside. Okay. Um, clearly, you know, weed isn't going to come illegal overnight all across America. You have a lot of states, you know, I'm living in one of them, North Carolina that, you know, are not very pro <laughs> legalizing cannabis, cannabis for recreation use. Um, but what I would say medical cannabis, um, couldn't, has a, uh, has a great chance uh, of getting approved uh, all across uh, all all the states here in America, um, and we have a company like this that already has this technology to track it and are, is already ahead of the ball. This is a company that I feel a government or a business will reach out to and say, "Hey, can I do a contract with you? Because I need your technology in order to do this because it's required. The government requires us to do this. You have the you have the technology to do it. Can we partner up?" And then when you have uh, you know press releases that's you know, showing this, showing that this company, you know, is now partner up with certain ca uh, cannabis companies, now it's partner up with the government agencies in order to provide this technology and this service to them. Now the company's valuation go up and now the stock market goes up because now more people are interested in it. More people are looking at this stock like, wow, this stock could really uh, boom because of the, the revenue and the technology that they have is already advanced and they're already 
ahead of the ball when it comes to looking at the sale and, and the beginning end to this to the to the seed. They're already ahead of the ball because they've been in the game for so long. Um, so that was the the company I wanted to tell everybody about. I'm very interested in them. I actually have a position my, myself in them. Um, I have a couple thousand shares in them because I, I definitely believe in, in that company um, long term. Now, what I would say is they could definitely have another dip um, anytime soon. Um, and whenever that dip comes, I would say get into it. Um, if you're confident now, you can get in now. But I would say wait until the dip come. Uh, when that when that thing dips down a little bit more, that's when you can get into it, get your entry into it, and just hold and keep adding, 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 adding on the shares. So eventually, <clears throat> excuse me. So eventually, you know, you have enough shares to when that thing jumps a dollar or two, now you're making money. You know, and I always tell people, like I tell people in my first episode, it's all about having an abundance of shares. You know, that's why people trade. Uh, contracts and do options uh, because they want an abundance of shares because the name of the game is the more shares you have the more money you can make when that stock goes up right so if you have a thousand shares and the stock moves a dollar you now made a thousand dollars versus if you only have one share you only made one dollar um so definitely look into when whenever you're buying a stock try to get build a position get you an entry point so what i mean by that is if a stock is five dollars and you think the stock is going to be worth ten dollars and you feel you know right now it's at five dollars and you feel it's going to drop a dollar your entry point is going to be four dollars right um and then whenever it drops you know below four dollars to say it'll go down to three dollars that's when you should be adding on um, and then in some cases, I mean, definitely you can a average up if you've done your research on the stock and you know that stock's going to go to $10 and let's say that $5 stock now jumped to six, but you have some free money now, you know, you sold another stock, you made, you know, profit off that other stock and you want to put that money into this one. By all means, I would say definitely do that. I do that all the time. Um, I've averaged up every other day, you know, in stocks just because I made money elsewhere for another stock. I'm done with that stock for right now. So now I need to put that money somewhere else because obviously... Um, you don't want money just sitting around and not, you know, working. Um, what I would say is you definitely um, always, you know, when I say you don't want to have money sitting around, you want to have some. Um, so what I mean by that, you know, have five to a thousand, whatever case may be for you. Um, have some money to sit around. Don't invest every single penny that you have um, because, you know, you definitely want to be able to buy more if the stock drops down. Uh, you definitely want to be able to average down. Um, if, if you're able to, now, if not, if you don't, you're not able to have any more, you just, you know, you're saying, Hey, all I got is a hundred and I'm putting the entire hundred and, you know, stock X, B and C, uh, whatever the case may be, then fine. You can do that. Um, but what I would say is definitely try to have a little bit left over in the buy bank, just because whenever that stock goes down, the stock goes down, you definitely want to have a little wiggle room so you can buy more and average down. Um, but, you know, I appreciate you all, you know, definitely giving me uh, comments on my last episode, um, gave me a little something to talk about in this episode. By all means, any more questions, any more comments, you know, drop a comment below or, you know, do anything that, you know, you need as far as reaching out on social media, on Facebook or anything. Um, feel free to drop a comment or, or ask me any questions regarding the market. Um, like I said, I'm here to help. I want this channel to be all about, you know, informative and everybody, you know, chiming in, asking questions and, you know, live, giving their bits and pieces because, you know, definitely we can all learn from each other. I'm not a master trader. I'm not going to tell anybody I am because I'm not. Um, I'm, I'm just learning and I'm sharing what I know because I've had um, so some, some success in it um, over the past year and a half. Um, so what I would say is definitely, you know, dig your heels in deep whenever you get into a stock. Um, do your research. Do do everything you need to do when it comes to a stock. And like I said, look at the stock current. Um, I feel they're going to, you know, have big things going on this year. Definitely by the end of the year, um, I feel they should at least double their price. Um, and and you know, when you're looking at stocks, always, always, always look at the last two years, and then, like I said, try to think of the next two years, so the future. Where are they going? What what products do they have? What services are they going to be offering um, and what potential revenue do they have? Like I was saying with the technology company, you know, they have potential to go into other industries, not just cannabis. Even though right now they're centered around cannabis, they have the potential to jump into other industries because uh, everybody, you know, when you're doing certain things, you want to track your product, right? Whether you're shipping something, you know, when you ship something from your home to your, your mother or your friend, uh, you, you have a, a tracking number, right? You want to track it. They want to track it. They want to know where it's at. They want to know when it's coming. Same thing for big companies. When big companies ship product, uh, they're shipping millions and millions of dollars of product. 
they definitely want to know where where it's at and where it's going and make sure that it's uh you know being taken care of whether it's you know a vaccine being refrigerated at a, at a certain temperature or whether it's um a produce being shipped to a certain place before it expires um everybody i would say needs technology like that um everybody wants technology like that so that's a company that i feel uh, definitely has a lot of upside they have their they have their uh foot in the door early um they've definitely been around for a little while before um a lot of other companies have started um so i think that company has the potential definitely with the way things are going when you look at government and the, the regulation surrounding marijuana um i think you know cannabis is going to eventually become legal um and medical cannabis is going to be accepted you know all across america so they're going to need technology to track it and figure out what's going on technology they didn't need before because it's not it wasn't approved everywhere um so i appreciate you all reaching out i appreciate everybody leaving comments sharing and, and letting everybody know about my my channel um it's much love i think like i said i definitely appreciate it appreciate that um you all be prepared for the next episode episode four I'm going to dive into some other things um, and I'm going to definitely explore other uh, ways, alternative ways to look at the stock market because um, I haven't really talked much about other ways to look and, and dive in in the stock market. Um, but I definitely want to touch on that in my next episode and touch on a few other things um, that I haven't spoke about. Um, but like I said, I appreciate everybody coming in. I appreciate everybody commenting and sharing and subscribing my page. Um, thank you all. I appreciate you all. You have, have a great day. Bye-bye.